What's up guys, Rogue9 here and many thanks once again to Squarespace for their ongoing support of the channel. They are the all-in-one platform that allows you to easily create a professional online presence, but I'll tell you all about that later. This is the second part of my breakdown of the recent Year 4 Season 4.3 patch in Rainbow Six Siege. There was so much to pick apart with this patch that I had to split the analysis into two different videos and in this one I will focus on the impact or lack of impact that the latest gun stat changes will bring to the game. Ella, Finker, Jaeger, Maestro, Nurk and Smoke are all seeing adjustments to their guns but not all of these changes will actually make much of a difference when fighting full health opponents so come let's go see what these modifications will actually mean. Ella is kind of annoying to play and has been for ages because her Scorpion Evo 3A1 submachine gun is such a nightmare to handle. To give her a little bit of a buff and make her more fun to play, the recoil on the first 16 shots of any burst is being reduced by quite an amount. But after these first shots the gun will still go crazy so it's best to stick to controlled bursts with her even after the patch. This is a comparison of the recoil without any control and the improvement actually looks pretty pretty good. When I went to try out how controllable the gun will be I ran two tests. One using up the whole mag for each burst and of course the second half of the mag kind of fudges the results a bit so I repeated the test while only firing half of the mag each time. As you can see things are definitely going to be improving but all in all compared to the other defender guns the Scorpion is still going to be quite challenging to handle and unless you're very close to your opponents successfully hitting all of your shots in a burst is still going to be challenging. So yeah. Is recoil going to be better? Yes. Is it going to be good? No. Finker may be a powerful attacker overall with generally high win rates, but her Spear 308 bullpup rifle is quite underwhelming. To address this, the devs have adjusted its damage per shot to 4226 depending on range, up from 38 to 24. And of course, the question then is what practical impact will this have on the game? Well, at ranges up to 25 meters, the results are a little bit underwhelming. Against level 1 armor opponents, you will only save one shot to down or kill, and only if the enemy is wearing rook armor and all of your shots hit just the arms or legs without overpenetrating into the body. Against level 2 armor, there is no improvement at all, and against level 3, it's again a saving of only one shot and only for either straight up limb shots or if rook plates are involved. Because the fire rate stays the same, each of those savings of one hit will also result in a saving of 86 milliseconds or 0.08 seconds in time to down or kill. At long ranges, over 35 meters, you will see a more frequent reduction in required hits, although again level 2 armor opponents are going to be just as difficult to beat unless you're hitting only the limbs. Nevertheless, you're going to save a shot in most cases and with that will of course also come the time saving of 86 milliseconds for every shot you save. But as always, it's worth keeping in mind that fights over 35 meters are most often decided by who gets the headshot rather than who can hit 6, 7 or even up to 10 shots. So again, I would say that the benefit will probably be limited. My conclusion here would be that at the most common combat distances in Siege, you're not actually going to feel much of a difference unless the opponent is already partially damaged to the point where the 4 extra damage per shot will actually do something. The Spear 308's fire rate is very similar to the top 5 hardest hitting assault rifles in Rainbow Six but it's also still a good chunk weaker. The gun's damage output per second after the patch will be 490 up from 443 and while that's a nice little improvement it's still far below the 537 DPS average for the rifle class. So even after the buff this gun is going to be below average. Given how powerful Finker's gadget can be, that's probably a good thing. If the objective was to make Finker's gun just a little bit better in a small handful of specific circumstances while keeping it relatively weak overall, then this update will achieve that. If you were hoping to play Finker more because her gun could finally be fun now, move along. There's literally nothing to see here. 
Even after the introduction of Wamai as a defender that finally mirrors Jaeger's abilities, it appears that the pick rate of good old Jaeger is still through the roof. I conducted an in-depth comparison of both operators in a recent video, link on screen now and coming up in the end card if you want to check that out, and I'm surprised that the pick rate of these guys hasn't naturally balanced out by itself yet, because while both have their strengths and weaknesses, I think that Wamai is a great alternative. But that's just my opinion, obviously there's still a problem with Jaeger's pick rate, and so to adjust that down a little, his 416C rifle is getting a bit of a damage nerf from 4321 down to 3818. So losing 4 points up close and 3 at range. What does this mean in practice? Well, at the most common combat ranges, almost nothing at all. Against full health opponents, you're only going to need one extra bullet against level 3 armor opponents, i.e. Gridlock, Rook, Fuse, or one variant of the Recruits. That's it. At 740 RPM, that means that taking down any of these three and a quarter operators is going to take 81 milliseconds longer if you land body or limb shots. At the far less relevant long ranges of 35 meters or more, the change is more impactful because you'll need one extra bullet in most situations and even two against level three attackers if you hit them in the limbs. And of course, this once again translates into the appropriate time loss. Conclusion, if you were worried about the impact that this nerf would have on one of your favorite operators, I would say you'll probably be okay. There are only three heavily armored attackers in the game, and against all other enemies you won't really feel a difference. Once again the change looks really scary, but in practice nothing much changes unless you're fighting at really long ranges. The one thing you might notice is that you will be downing one armor opponents more often than before, and that three armors will die instantly. But other than that, this nerf is actually very gentle. If you enjoy playing Jaeger, take a deep breath and relax, you'll be fine. But do maybe check out my Jaeger vs Wamai video and maybe consider switching things up a bit more. Wamai, in my opinion, is definitely an underrated alternative. And now let's take a quick breather from the stats and why don't I take that opportunity to tell you about the cool things that our sponsor Squarespace has to offer. When you create an online presence with Squarespace, it's not just about easily creating a website. Whatever your goals online are, they have the tools to let you achieve them. Are you an artist or content creator in the Rainbow Six scene and you want to build an online store where you can show off your past work and offer goods like branded merchandise or services such as commissions for things like thumbnails or Twitch emotes? Squarespace has you covered. Beyond that, you can use their built-in search engine optimization and social media tools to reach out and engage your audience, and then you can use the analytics to make sure you have a full picture of who is visiting your site and where they're coming from. Check out all of the features they provide with a free trial at squarespace.com. If you like what you see, make sure to go to squarespace.com slash rogue9, link in the description, to get a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. Ever since joining Team Rainbow in Operation Parabellum, Maestro has without a doubt been a very competent defender. He has a great gadget and what is essentially an attacker weapon but on defense. And with all of the little buffs that the LMG class has received over time, his Alder has just become more and more powerful as we go along. 525 damage per second is outrageous when you consider that the second best defender primary, Bandit's MP7, only does 480 and the SMG class on average is only 411. Huge magazine, outstanding fire rate, very controllable and good damage with each shot make the Alder probably the best primary weapon on defense right now and it makes perfect sense to do something to bring it a bit more in line with the rest of the Rainbow Six arsenal. Even without the ACOG, this gun is still a great choice and in all honesty, I can see the Alder still being a primary candidate for further nerfs in future. And finally, the patch notes tell us about one more gun buff, and that's Nux FMG9 submachine gun, and of course, that means that smoke will also benefit. Damage is going to be 3420 instead of the current 3218, and in this case, we finally have a change that will have a definite impact in most situations. Up to 18 meters distance, you will consistently need one less hit to down or kill against level 1 and 3 armors, and at longer ranges above 28 meters after damage drop-off, 
Every armor class will need one bullet less, with three armors and limb strikes even taking two shots less. This will result in a time saving of 75 milliseconds for each bullet that you save and that's against many operators up close and all of them at longer range. Hooray! So that's an actual benefit for both operators going forward. But then again, the most common loadout on smoke is the shotgun MP combo and Nurk is a very challenging operator anyway. It's undeniable that at pro league level where communication is key and observation tools play a huge role, Nurk's ability to move up undetected can swing the odds in favour of the attackers. But if you're playing online, anywhere up to plat level or if you're solo queuing, the advantage that Nurk's gadget can bring has far less of a positive impact for your team. So the conundrum is, if you give her a gun that's powerful, she's going to be broken at the highest skill levels in the game, but with an okayish gun she will never be very useful to the vast majority of the player base. I personally don't ever see this issue being resolved, so despite the nice little buff to her SMG, Nook will still be only marginally useful for almost everyone who plays Siege. Ying is getting a bit of a buff in many ways, with the hope of making her Candela flash grenades a bit more reliable to use. First off the grenade will receive an outline that Ying can see through walls and the intention here is to give the player a bit more of an understanding of how far the grenade has rolled into the room. So if it gets hung up on a piece of furniture or any other prop lying around on the floor, you will at least know before charging in and getting downed by a completely unstunned opponent. The next improvement is with the distribution and detonation time of the flash pellets within the grenade. Up until now, each grenade has always had six pellets, five that would be thrown out in a circle just above head height and one that would go off on the floor right on the grenade itself. After the next patch update, it will then be seven pellets. One goes off on the grenade itself, three go out at crouch level and then three just above head height. The timer on each pellet will only be 0.3 seconds in future, up from currently one second when thrown and 2.5 seconds when placed on a wall. Quicker detonation will give the defenders less chance to turn or run away and therefore result in more reliable flashing. And finally, the last little change to the pellets might not seem like much, but I think this could actually be really important. The patch notes tell us that up until now, pellets that hit any kind of map prop just fall straight to the floor and detonate there, but in my testing I found many instances where pellets that didn't have a perfectly clear path could actually fail to go off altogether. See here examples of where only 5 pellets go off each time. In future, the collision will be a bit more intelligent and the pellets will no longer just fall straight down if they hit an obstacle. In my preliminary testing, this seems to have also done a great job at helping fix the failures to detonate and fingers crossed we will have far more reliable behaviour going forward. Before we wrap up, let me quickly take you through a couple of bug fixes that will also have some gameplay impact. As you will know, Mute's jammers have two different ranges when interacting with drones or some operators. Up to 6 meters away, you will experience minor interference and once you get to 3 meters distance, your signal will be completely blocked. Everyone will have experienced this effect while droning and a very similar effect is present when using Jackal's Inox visor. First interference, then total loss of vision. The problem in the game pre-patch is that Jackal is not able to scan footprints even when in only the 6 meter range and that is unintended. Once the patch goes live, scanning can take place anywhere up to 3 meters away from a mute jammer. Ying's candelas in the live build can sometimes have an issue where if they're rolling down stairs, their detonation can be delayed and they slide all the way to the bottom instead of going off where they normally should. This is being fixed and instead they will stop and detonate as intended once the patch goes live.
And finally, something that many players probably never noticed, but before the patch, the holographic sight when used on Glass's DMR has a much larger and thicker reticle than it is supposed to, and that is getting fixed with the upcoming update as well. So great news for all 7 of the players who run the holo sight on Glass. For the other 50 odd million of us who use normal sights on his gun, this change will have no real impact. And that's it everything you need to know about how the upcoming changes will affect your games. Do leave a like if you learned something useful and why not swing by my relatively new Instagram account for more Rainbow Six content. Thanks everyone for watching and with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.